Hi guys, Jane Pike here from confidentwriter.online. In the last video we hung out together in, we talked about the emotional equation, which is a really useful frame of reference for you to be able to draw on to direct your emotional state to a more constructive place at any one time. In the last issue just gone of Your Horse, I wrote an article all about managing anxiety and specifically talked about the anatomy of anxiety. Within that we discussed the feeling pathway and the thought pathway. The feeling pathway is when anxiety arises as a result of environmental or emotional triggers. The thought pathway is when we're using our thoughts for evil instead of good and essentially focusing on what it is that we want to avoid and creating the experience of anxiety as a consequence. What I want to run through with you now is a practical exercise to really demonstrate just how that occurs. And we're going to do that by imagining a piece of fruit. <laughs> I would like you to imagine on my hand here there is an apple. It's a red apple and there are the leaves still attached to the stalk at the top so that you know it's just been picked. And you get the sense by the way that the beautiful blush is on the skin and the shininess of the apple and it's quite firm to touch that when you bite down on this apple it is going to be the perfect apple. Now right now I'm going to slice down through the centre and the two halves are just splitting apart and sitting on my hand and all of the juice has risen to the surface now. You might actually see the beads of juice sitting on top and the beautiful glistening skin there. There's a little bit of juice actually that's just run down and is lying on my hand now and you'll get that beautiful appley smell that comes from all the lovely appley fragrances that are around. Now what I'm going to do is just cut a little bit off and I'm going to hand it to you and you're going to take it and bite down on that apple and now we can just taste all of the beautiful apple juiciness that is coursing around our mouth. Okay, so clearly there is no apple but despite that fact, despite us knowing on a conscious level that there is no apple and that was a completely imagined exercise, you may notice that you have some saliva in your mouth and your body has actually physically prepared to eat the apple. The reason for that is that your unconscious mind, which is in charge of all of those processes, cannot tell the difference between what is real and imagined. And if we feed it enough sensory information, it clocks the experience as real and signals your body to respond in an appropriate way. Now, if we were to transfer this knowledge to more practical and applicable means, what that tells us is that if we create a mental movie that has enough sensory detail involved, we will feel the experience of that coming to life as if it were in the present moment. Say for instance you're driving to the stables or to the arena or you're washing up and you're thinking about something that's about to happen with your horse on the next ride. Maybe you have some concerns about that ride, maybe you're really fearful about something that happens and you see that come to life in your mind's eye. Now for all intents and purposes at that point in time you might recognize that you are completely safe and you may be nowhere physically near your horse in order to experience that feeling of anxiety. However, you've seen what it is in your mind's eye that you don't want to happen. You can register that feeling and on an unconscious level just like we experience with the apple your body goes into that anxious mode because we've signaled it to do so. This is the creative marriage between thought and feeling and what I hope it demonstrates to you is just how important it is to focus on what you want as opposed to what it is that you want to avoid. Instead of thinking about what you don't want to happen, focus on what it is that you would like to happen. If we were to draw on some of the skills that we discussed in the last video about the emotional equation, we know that we could use our self-talk to direct our focus in a direction that's actually constructive to our purpose. So let's say you're concerned about your horse spooking. The positive version of that would be wanting him to be calm and attentive or wanting him to be focused and attentive. And focusing on that gives you a completely different feeling state, a completely different set of mental images that allow for a completely different feeling. The take home message from this is be really aware of your thoughts. If they are creating feeling which is not useful to you, check in on what you're focusing on. Focus on what it is that you want as opposed to what it is that you want to avoid. Use your self-talk to 
really direct your focus in that direction. So you might say to yourself, what is it that I want to happen in this situation? Or what is it that my horse needs from me right now? And you can use that to motivate your decisions and actions and take you both in a more beneficial direction.